Hello my beautiful lovelies, welcome to my channel if you're new, welcome back to my channel if you're not new. Today I'm coming to you live from the inside of my fifth wheel and we're going to talk about the four generalized types of mobile living that you might consider for yourself and your family. So this video is going to be for people who have considered the mobile lifestyle but aren't really sure what they're getting themselves into and they kind of want an easy breakdown. Or if you just are curious about, you know, things that you should consider um, and you don't know which um, direction to go, whether that's an RV or a van or, you know, whatever. So I've got four major types. I didn't do like class A, B, C because I thought that could be a little confusing to a beginner. So I just am going to call it your fifth wheel, your travel trailer, your van, and your RV. And so I'm going to talk about out of those options, which might be the best for you, or maybe you're going to find out in this video that mobile living is actually not everything that you thought it was and it's not for you and you'd be better off in an apartment or a house or something like that. So I'm hopefully going to be able to clear up some of those questions for you. First and foremost, um, I'm going to talk about the types of options that you have. So first is a fifth wheel. That is basically something that you're going to need a truck um, to pull. It is where your trailer has a little hitch that goes over it kind of right here and your truck's going to sit right here and you're actually going to lift the trailer onto the truck so you're going to need something that is going to be able to haul um, everything and you're probably going to need to purchase a hitch as well special for your fifth wheel to make sure that everything is haulable so if you're comfortable with that first of all the hitching and the unhitching which i'll talk about later and also um, do you have the right kind of vehicle for that versus a travel trailer you don't necessarily have to have a truck you could have one of those really cool like vans or like minivans um, and you can haul a travel trailer depending on the size and capacity of your vehicle so that's something to consider do you need to purchase a new vehicle um, or do you have a vehicle already ready for the option that you're choosing or the other route you could choose a van or an rv so i'm going to call a van just anything that is like um you know your typical van you take the seats out and you create a house out of that that's kind of on the smaller side and then i'm going to call an rv anything that's like you know about 40 foot it's like a whole house and you're going to drive it and it feels like you're driving a bus and i'm only making those distinctions just because if you're a beginner it can be a little confusing to get into the logistics of what's what but they're just things to consider each and every one of these is going to have a different process of buying and licensing and insurance so that's also something that you're going to need to consider i'm not going to go into the details of that in this video i might make another video about it but it's something to consider um where you purchase your vehicle is going to be something to consider are you going to purchase out of state if so are you going to need to pay fees if you purchase in state are you going to be able to purchase um with the dealer or are you going to have to take a loan from the bank there's just a lot of things to consider um but we're not going to get into all of that because then this video is going to be like super long and i would like to make this video preferably a little bit short and just kind of go over the basics so that being said let's go ahead and start and the first question that i have written down is so how are you going to tow and how much space do you need what are you comfortable with so so do you have a family for example do you have a family with kids and dogs is it just you and your um, spouse is it yourself um, are you a female solo traveler? If you have an entire family of four, for example, a van might feel really cramped really fast versus if it's just yourself and you're a female solo traveler, a van might be better because you can actually, um, let's say let's say you're in a parking lot by yourself and something makes you nervous, you can just hop from your bed to the front seat and you can get out of there without ever having to leave your vehicle. That in itself is a great bonus if you're feeling unsafe at all. You're already attached to your vehicle. Same thing with an RV, except you're going to be hauling um, a larger vehicle. And so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to drive if you're not used to that. So that's something to consider. But keep in mind how much space you're going to need actually and how much of the space that you're using is actually functional. So for example, I've seen a lot of floor plans and I encourage you if you haven't um, already and you're thinking about this lifestyle, go to a RV dealer or a camping world or whatever it is that you have around you and go physically stand inside of these travel trailers, stand inside of fifth wheels, stand inside of toy haulers. Um, that's, that's another category that I forgot to mention earlier, but a toy hauler is another option. Um, and that would be a great option if you have actual like kayaks or um, four by fours that you want to take and haul with you wherever you're going. Um, so if you're planning on hauling like a dirt bike or anything like that, that might be another good choice. Um, so that's something to consider as well. So you have your fifth wheel, your travel trailer, your RV, your toy hauler, and your van. So those are the five categories that I should have said earlier. So 
Anyway, um, that's something to keep in mind. And then when you're standing in the space, see if you can reach the cabinets. See if you can use everything, if it's functional for you and your family. Is there space for your kids to hang out if you have kids? Is there space? Hey, no man. Sorry, I have my dogs. Is there space for your dogs to run around? Um, what are you going to actually need? Does it have a full-size fridge? Does it have appliances that you're used to having? Do you need those things? Do you need a second bathroom? Those are all things to consider. So how are you going to tow it and how much space do you need? So those are the first two things. The next thing is, are you comfortable with mechanics? And this goes, or can you get comfortable with mechanics? Maybe you're not currently comfortable, but you feel that you have the brain for it or you have someone that you can trust that you can take your vehicle to. Now, when I say that, that's also to bring up the point of, are you able to leave your vehicle somewhere and still have a place to go? So for example, a benefit of a fifth wheel or a travel trailer is you can unhook um, from those things. And if you need to stay in your truck for a couple days while your vehicle is getting maintenance, you can do that. Versus a van, if you put your van or your RV in the shop, you might not have an additional vehicle to to detach from or go stay in. So either you need to have a home base or be able to fix things on your own because things will go wrong. It's gonna happen. You're gonna lock yourself out. I did that literally today. You're going to break things. Things are gonna be finicky. It's gonna take some learn and curve. And if you can get comfortable with electricity, with the water pumps, that's its own thing because you need to consider how are you going to, if you're going to have water running or electricity, how much electricity do you need to run everything that you have, for one? How much water are you going to need to run everything that you have? Do you need to um, plug in for a long time or are you going to be boondocking? So boondocking is kind of when you get away from electricity and everything and you turn around and um, you're basically off grid camping, which is okay, but you're going to have to be mindful of how many gallons of water can I have if I'm going to have water? Um, am I going to need electricity to run everything? Another thing to consider is a source of income to pay for everything that you're doing. What are you comfortable spending? If you're looking at a van, a lot of the vans right now are going from what I saw was a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars for a van to live in. And you're losing a lot of that space versus like a fifth wheel you can get a pretty decent fifth wheel from anywhere between like i would say like 30 to 80 hundred thousand dollars depending on what you're comfortable spending and the same thing with travel trailers so what what you want to look at is um first of all what are you comfortable spending and how are you going to pay for it so do you have a job um that works remote are you going to be doing odd jobs do you have a source of income do you have savings that's all something to consider don't forget that you have to pay rent if you're going to be staying at an rv park you're going to have to pay electricity um things like that you don't have to furnish the um house like you would an apartment um, in most RVs or travel trailers because they're going to come with everything already in it So that's one less expense, but you still have to buy your pots and pans and all of that stuff So just consider stocking the fridge that's going to add up really quickly So that first time that you're actually moving in and stocking everything and getting used to it. You're going to find um, Things that you need to buy and it's going to add up really quick So just keep that in mind um, buy what you need and and wait to see what you don't because you don't have as much space as you do in a traditional house to store things that you do in a rv or fifth wheel excuse me I'm sorry. okay and then the last two things that i would consider are one are you comfortable being outside or around the elements because in this kind of living mobile living the odds are you are going to be surrounded more by nature and you're going to be outside more often and even if you're inside for most of the time the insulation in these things is often not as great as like you would get in a house because there's not as much space for that kind of stuff um leave it good girl sorry and you're gonna find yourself especially if you have dogs you have to take them outside you can't just open the door and let them in the backyard um you have to actually take them for walks keep them on leash things like that um and if you have animals that's something else to consider do you have let's say it's hot or cold in your climate do you have a safe way to keep them safe in the vehicle without freezing or overheating them that's something else that you need to consider do you have ac or windows or something like that that's going to be suitable for your situation 
And then lastly, do you have another vehicle that you need to haul? If you're in a van, you might not want to take your van everywhere that you go to and from work or to the store or anything like that, just because you don't, you want to keep it in a safe space. Um, same thing with your RV. If you have an RV, the long ones, like you drive like a bus, like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to be able to take that through the drive through or um, even your fifth wheeler or travel trailer. They're not going to fit in things like that. You're not going to want to take them to the store. So you're going to want to either have a second vehicle that you're going to either have to tow or figure out something. Do you need two vehicles? Can you detach your vehicle? Um, and then how are you going to manage that? I think off the top of my head, that is everything that I can think of to consider for before purchasing something like this or committing to this kind of lifestyle. Um, if you can test it out before you do it, that's a great idea. Um, I definitely recommend, but I'm not sure that you would be able to. I think the closest that most people will be able to get to is just actually physically going to the lot um, where they sell these things and then standing inside of each and every one of them and actually using them. And I was, one thing that was really cool about where I purchased from was they allowed you to stay the night um, after you made the purchase and find anything that was either out of place or needed to be fixed and they would actually fix it and teach you how to do everything the slide outs the hookups and everything so that was really cool and valuable um, so if you can find someone that does that or somewhere that does that that would I definitely would recommend to do that too because it's going to take you some time to get used to the appliances that you have in your um, setup okay so I think that was everything that I have um, I don't want to make this video too long hopefully it's not too long but um, don't forget to follow uh, along for the rest of the journey I'll be posting more about tutorials things that we find just the everyday um, ups and downs of living in this kind of lifestyle and I hope this helped you um, comment below and I'll see you in the next one bye love Loren